swallow this mic. So yeah, there's got a few, uh, few scriptures here, now, you know, nothing, nothing new, but something that uh, I suppose we've been considering since I've been here, and there's a part that's critical to our, our spiritual lives, uh, is the need for fellowship, and, and you know, true fellowship. Uh, so there's, yeah, the critical need for fellowship, really, and uh, but true fellowship. Um, you know, fellowship is not just about us all meeting here uh, as individuals. If you look around, people at different uh, different ages, uh, different social economic backgrounds, uh, different parts of the world, even Australians. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, but to have us, you know, in, in, in a room together, what, what, what kind of unites us? What, what does it mean? Uh, and, and what's that special, special chemistry you hear when people see and, and they come in and they say, you know, well, when I came in, I just saw something. And I think a big part of that is the fellowship, and then the fellowship uh, binds us. So, um, and also, yeah, we share in, our, share in each other's... Uh, Struggles and joys. You can't do that alone. And talk about more about that in a moment. Let's turn to uh, Hebrews. Hebrews 10, 24. And yeah, for me, this is probably the size of fellowship is the cornerstone of, uh, of, our, of our, our faith. And uh, let's, let's read. And let us consider one another to provoke, uh, provoke in, in, the, in, the, in the modern uh, term is obviously not, not uh, normally a negative, but this is uh, the original meaning of this is to, to arouse, to excite, or to create a call to action, if you will. Uh, so to arouse, to excite, a call to action, and to love and do good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And I think the you know this is talking not just so much the physical getting together in the hall, but I think also is considering the the uh, attitude of wanting to uh, assemble here uh, to to exhort one another. Uh, and uh, for me, I, you can't really stress it enough. The well, how essential this is. It's not just um, you, you know uh, be, be, being being born again, and and then you're, it's okay. You know, it, and fellowship is is nice, but it's a uh, you know. If I can squeeze it in, or if we can do it, it I think the, the absolute true value of it, and again, it, to me, it's, a, it's it's kind of the cornerstone to our walk. Uh, so we don't have to turn to this, but you know, we read in, in Genesis, uh, God, uh, God said that it's not good, it's not good that a man should be alone. In, uh, Genesis two eighteen, and. You know, we, I mean, we are, we're created and there's an intrinsic need for uh, companionship and uh, community slash fellowship. And that's, that's uh, very, very, uh, very true. And I think, uh, let, let, let's turn to the actually, to keep things moving. Another bacon, uh, I've not been to uh, <laughs> <laughs> Consumed yet? Ecclesiastes 2 9 to 10. Uh, this kind of reminds us, uh, and I like the scripture. So, two are better than one, for if they fall, the one will lift up uh, his fellow. So, life's tough, life's got challenges, uh, we face temptations and doubts uh, at all sides, we face tears. Um, 
and with all that craziness coming in at our lives 24-7, because it does, uh, what's, our, what's our antidote to all that? What's our antidote to uh, dealing with that? Is to, we pray and we, we, that's, that's right, and, but really it's to be in the fellowship, consume as much fellowship as you can. Uh, and that's where, where I think we lifted, uh, we lifted up, we lift each other up in faith. Uh, you know, we find, we find strength in, in praying together, that's why we, we do pray together, not in silos or... Um, and even simple conversation where we share, you know, uh, not even in the testimony, just we share scriptures, we share blessings. These are all parts that create the, I suppose, the DNA of fellowship that has to trace over our, 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 our walk. And if you think of a, always think of a, a coal is removed from a fire, you know, the coal quickly uh, cools on its own. As soon as it's put back with other, other coals, other, then it reunites very quickly. Uh, and you know, fellowship is, is if it's a cornerstone of our faith, it is vibrant uh, and alive, not, 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 not dead. So, uh, let's go to Proverbs, Proverbs 27 and 17. Talk about, I suppose, the role of accountability, really. Uh, a very well known scripture again. And I think fellowship does provide accountability in the sense of that. Iron sharpeneth iron, so no man sharpeneth the continents of his, his friend. So a man sharpeneth continents of his friend. I've, I've seen them uh, sharpening iron or, you know, swords, and they're using, and it's, it's got a fascinating thing to see. And you see chefs do it, like, I'm not a chef, so uh, I wouldn't be able to pass on anything. I like, I like to consume the food, <laughs> but, but they do fantastic, uh, and, and those, both, both of the, the, uh, the, the tools they use are both very, very, very uh, strong iron. By themselves or separated, they're useless, there's no, there's no sharpening going on, it'll stay blunt. Uh, so, you know, I think it's, it, it, we, and I was also considering, you know, we, we, we don't, we encourage us to stay in the fellowship and stay on that path as we are a fellowship and as we are a fellowship that, uh, and it, you know, it's in the name as well. Uh, so, we don't pass judgment. Uh, and we're not judgy about each other because that that's that's uh, uh, not, not that's not going to uh, create a, a kind of the, the the environment or culture, if you will, where people truly come together and feel sharpened. Or even if you you know, for, for me, I've I've spent time not uh, coming, <coughs> and when I've looked look to the word to come back and spend time coming back until I was a you know kind of allowed back cleared back or uh, it's tough very tough to do it by yourself uh, it really is it's so much harder than having folk around you that have you know that shared um, message uh, because we stumble, and we should all face that. We should all face that we will stumble at times. Um, and if we have a good pattern of being in the fellowship, uh, you know, people ask, uh, people ask, uh, especially at bath camp, why, why, why do you stay on site? And because we you know we live 15 minutes away from the camp, but uh, you know, and the, the reason why we do it is to soak up the, the fellowship. You can be out of fellowship waiting for the breakfast in the queue, you know? 
Because it's amazing uh, what you know the, the things I've heard, and, and, and you can be talking, and suddenly you're like, so fellowship is all around. But you know, for me, and I speak on the rest of the, the family, you know, we like to be there, to soak it up. And you know, like we're here, trying, trying to soak it up, and uh, uh, and what great fellowship has been. Uh, so, talks in James uh, five sixteen. Don't don't turn to it. Uh, and the clock is ticking. Uh, we grow stronger together. It says to confess our, our fault uh, one to another and pray one to another that we may be healed. It was an odd thing. Uh, Luke, uh, Luke asked uh, for prayer for me. Uh, and it was, my, it was uh, uh, the, uh, the second, Lord's camp, so. Sorry? Fourth camp, and he prayed, and I was. Not used to ever hearing anybody say, put my hand up and praying for Robbie's health. And Luke did exactly to me what the scripture is saying, you know, he was praying one for another, not just for yourself, that ye may be healed. One for another. Again, this this, this all this this community slash fellowship. Luke prayed for me and that that bowl be over and I was healed. Um, and also, you know, I touched on it just before, the fellowship here is, is a witness to the world. And this, this magic that people see when they come in, it's not, um, I think a lot of that magic is seeing the unity we have. You know, the unity we have is, uh, and the unity comes from the fellowship, from us all, all one into be together to strengthen each other, and uh, you know it says in John, uh, and don't turn to it for time because uh, it's going away. Uh, and even Jesus said, uh, "By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. If you pass that love on. If you love yourself only, then this is not." It's contrary to what Jesus has said here, to have a love one for another. Now, I suppose it, that, that, people seeing that we have that love, there's no, there's no agendas, there's no, you know, see all, any love in the world is given, is given at a cost, normally. Uh, but actually, the love here, in the fellowship, in the body, there is no cost. And I think that really does, that witness, and that does. Oh, just have my uh, timer. Right, I'm going to... Thank you, Sophie. <laughs> 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 I'd like to say, yeah, I've mean, like, timed this perfect, but uh, let's not be daft. <laughs> um, I'm just going to uh, say, right, five ways, five practical ways of cultivating uh, fellowship. Prioritise gathering together like this, throw yourself into it. And do everything you can do, we try to get to everything we can. Uh, serve each other, look for ways to support each other. Uh, you know, in Galatians it, it talks about encouraging us up to bear one another's burdens and, f uh, and so fulfil the law. If we bear our own, we're not fulfilling the law there. Be honest and open. Um, I think fellowship and the sorry pastor, I know I'm going slightly over. Uh, I've almost done that. Uh, being honest and open, fellowship requires that authenticity. Sharing your struggles. Let others know. Uh, if, you, if you don't, you know, you're, not, you're just going to bear them yourself. Uh, don't be afraid to let your brother and sister know, I'm struggling in this, I really am. To me, you know, uh, that again is a cornerstone. Be vulnerable, don't be afraid to be vulnerable, and a bit of a risk sometimes our, our mind sees. But with brothers and sisters, you can be vulnerable and share your struggles and your needs. Don't go away here. With internalised struggles, when you've got this fellowship here, and uh, finally, 
pray together. Let pray, pray reunites us, doesn't it? It's kind of uh, one of our, our core activities where we pray to God together uh, and make make that make that prayer uh, a prayer of one for another. So we share each other's burdens, and, and you know we all grow closer as a fellowship together. And uh, I'm over time, so my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good morning, everyone. My testimony uh, started uh, in uh, 2011, in June uh, uh, five, uh, 4, 4 of June. I uh, got baptized uh, in Fowl Fellowship uh, uh, for the second time uh, on water um, because I was already baptized before. Um, uh, I, heard, um, I was invited for a convention by Petra and Brother uh, Venom. Uh, I had to go to the convention. I was going to the market and they invited me, so I, that's how I uh, came to the Fowl Fellowship. But uh, my testimony started in, um, in Suriname, when I was living in Suriname, uh, I, uh, uh, had, I had an invitation to go to a Pentecostal church when I was uh, uh, 15 years old. And there uh, I did a sinner's prayer uh, a few times. Every time I would feel like I'm a sinner, I would go at front and do a sinner's prayer, but then they told me that you only have to do it one time, then you're a child of God, but I didn't saw the difference. But uh, two months later, I, um, uh, I, uh, I was praying for to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit that's speaking in tongues. Because uh, they say that speaking in tongues is just one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But if you don't receive it, it's, just, just, uh, it's not so, uh, don't have to be said that God has other gifts for you. But uh, at the youth camp, I really asked God because I told God, I don't care what uh, those people say, that it's not for everybody, but I want everything of you than them. I speak in tongues that evening, and the next morning uh, uh, I was reading my Bible and I saw the difference because first, every morning I was reading my Bible, I didn't understand it, but but that this this morning I could understand it and uh, and I, I I could see that uh, God was really speaking to my heart, and uh, uh, but then I will go 50, 50 then that being no yes. 15 years being in the Pentecostal churches, different Pentecostal churches, and then uh, uh, seeing things happen in the churches that uh, that that uh, against the Bible, and I was like, I was so much confused all those 15 years because I was like, from they're doing it this way, but the Bible sees this, and and I was struggling with that 15 years long. So when I came to Revival Fellowship, and it was a simple gospel, this that, and they uh, told me the truth that. Um, you don't become a child of God by doing a sinner's prayer, by being born again of the Spirit, and they show out of the Bible. And if you receive the Holy Spirit, the evidence of that, you're going to speak in tongues. And so I could think back, 15 years back, that that's why it made the difference that when I could speak in tongues, and I read my Bible, I could understand it, so I, I believe it, that's true, because I had an experience also. So I decided to get baptized then the next day, Sunday, in the truth, because... Uh, uh, because I always had a feeling when I was baptized, when I was 15 years old, that I have to get baptized again, but I didn't know why I had to get baptized again. I had the, the urge, always when they have baptisms, and you have to do it again <coughs> for the right way. I didn't understand it, but when I came to the fellowship, I, I was very happy that I could see that I have to get, get baptized <coughs> in the truth, not in a lie. And, uh, and then my walk started. I got very encouragement by brothers and sisters to pray a lot in tongues and also to go outreaching and then God gave me also the overcoming to go to the street and outreach and talk to people because first I was very shy and very scared and because I was thinking what, what I have to offer but uh, uh, going with the saints outreaching and then uh, uh, seeing people, only just in my testimony, seeing that people uh, uh, came to the fellowship and also my family and colleagues and friends. Some of them got baptized, born again, uh, didn't walk, but by my grandmother and my sister. 
they're still walking in the in the Lord. I thank God for that. And I also have dealings. Uh, uh, I was very sick at, at, at the camp. Uh, the high fever. I I I use medicine, but it, it didn't help. The fever only uh, get higher. And then I was sitting in the in the meeting, and then I went at the front of the prayer line, and I was uh, very painful for my body. And then when I go to my seat again, and the, the pain was gone, the fever was gone, and I felt very good. And 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 also, and I'm, uh, uh, the <coughs> Uh, healed me of uh, hay fever. I had a very bad alert, allergic reaction by my nose and my eyes, so tearing up in my throat. And then I heard testimony of our brother. He was healed of it. And so I, uh, I was, I went at the front prayer line and I prayed that God, I want to be healed of that also. And then I still had uh, the same, the same sy symptoms. But I was like, oh, no, I can feel that I have the symptoms, but. I was um, thinking, but I'm healed. I don't care if I feel it, but I'm healed because I pray for it. I'm healed. And then and then in a, a, a two days, it left, the, the symptoms left me. And then now it's like uh, yeah. eight years ago, and uh, I praise God for, for the healing. And I want to thank God to be here at this camp. It's possible. And uh, thank you for helping me.
In Matthew 24, we read from verse 3. And uh, it says in verse 3, and, uh, and this is Jesus as, uh, and as he sat upon, uh, upon the Mount of Olives, uh, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the, of the world? Uh, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. That was the first answer, you know. And uh, he never talked about the signs of, you know, all this, uh, about the world, you know, the, the wars and the rumbles of wars. The first thing came out of his mouth was, you know, take heed that no man deceives you, you know. We are here, sons and daughters, you know, of God. We have been spirit filled with the Holy Spirit. And, uh, you know, we know the truth, we know the right way, and we know the wrong ways, you know. And, uh, you know, the world, they are, they are heading to the to the wrong direction, you know. But once we've been filled with the Holy Spirit, we know the right and we know the wrong, you know. And uh, we can walk in the right direction, the Lord's way, or we, whether we can go back and follow our own uh, the world ways there, uh, you know. And we know both directions. And uh, and the reason why we we know the right way because we we've, we've got God's Holy Spirit, and uh, and and you know and the, and the right way is. You yourself, your salvation will be the first thing in your in your life. You know, you cannot go and save others if our own salvation is not right with the, with the Lord. You know, you cannot go and encourage our brothers and sisters if our own salvation is not right with the, with the Lord. You know, it's you first before you go out there, and uh, you know that's what Jesus said. Take heed that no man deceives you. You know, and there are people. You know, especially in the fellowship, they got you know different people. We, we have seen. Uh, we have heard the word of God early today, uh, this uh, week, about higher ground, and uh, you know, let's remain on that high ground, you know, and uh, because uh, I, I was I was in the army, and uh, mostly, you know, when we go for exercise, we put the enemies on the high ground, and uh, and we try and you know, try and get that position uh, to be on the high ground. But if you are on the high ground, you can easily see the enemies, you know, below. And in your spiritual life, if you are up on, the, on that high ground, you know, you, you usually can see, you know, your brothers and sisters, you know, you know, uh, those who are weak and uh, those who need encouragement, those who need, you know, uh, and if you are up there, it's easy for you to encourage them and, and uh, you know, they will listen to you because, you know, your, your testimony and, you know, what you're doing is already right in, in the eyes of God, you know, because the Lord said, you know, when you, when you do this for me, you know, he's the one who lifts us up, you know. Let's not lift our own self up, you know. Let the Lord do his work there. And, uh, you know, then afterwards, it's mankind, you know. And, uh, and then in verse 5, it says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many, you know. And, and you shall hear wars and rumors of wars, and uh, see that you do not be in trouble, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, you know. Uh, look, look around us. Look in the Middle East, and it's happening there now. You know, Russia and Ukraine, and uh, you know, it's in, in your local, you know, the government, everywhere is corrupted, you know. And uh, it's already been prophesied, you know, ages, thousands of years ago. And uh, let's go to the next scripture, which is uh, in one Corinthians chapter three. This is Paul from the Prometheus here. And uh, you know, we have to take our life very seriously in the Lord. And uh, it's no more playing around, no more jokes, and you know, and, and take it, taking it lightly. You know, fellowship is very important. Uh, our preaching, we heard, you know, uh, going out preaching the gospel is very important. Uh, encouraging your brothers and sisters, loving your brethren, loving your neighbors, you know, loving your family at home. You know, the only way to love your, your people out in the world, you know, love your enemies out there, love your, you know, if you love them, you know, you, you, you will never hide this gospel from them, you know, you will never hide it from them, you know, you sign your testimony there, and they will come back to you, there's different ways of spreading the gospels, you know, and uh, if you sign your testimony out there, they will know that we, you are someone different, you know, and there will be a time, they will be asking you questions, you know, uh, but sharing the gospel is very important, you know, opening your mouth, telling them, you know, Jesus Christ is about to come back, and to love them, 
is not given if the worldly things, money or anything, you know, that won't, you know, last. You know, to love them, you want them to make it when the Lord returns. And same thing to your brothers and sisters, you know, to love them is to encourage them, you know. And let's, you know, try and break each other, you know, and come on, let's go this way, you know, the Lord's way. And, uh, you know, it's really great to see, you know, brothers and sisters heading towards the right direction. Uh, especially when the Lord is about to return there. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we'll read from verse, uh, in verse 16. And uh, it says in verse 16 here, Know you not that uh, you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy with uh, which temple you are, you know, we all have the temple of God, you know, we, we, you know, we cannot break one another down, you know, we cannot, you know, uh, go in uh, such small group and talking about this brother or that sister, you know, we should be working together, you know, and just like on the Pentecostal day, you know, uh, after when they received the Holy Spirit, they were, they were all in one accord, you know, and uh, when they received the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit afterwards, you know, it came, they were really, you know, in love there, you know, bringing stuff, you know, sharing stuff, supporting one another. And, you know, it should be happening, you know, we should be more than what happened on the day of Pentecostal, you know, because we are living in the last days uh, here, you know, and the Lord is about to return, you know, and we should be more strong and, you know, we should be bounding together, you know, as brothers and sisters, walking in the same direction, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and let's stay on that high ground, you know, because, you know, if you see someone who's a bit, you know, uh, uh, who's not been great encouragement, you know, who's, who's suffering a bit with their spiritual life, we have that to encourage them, you know, keep encouraging them, you know, never give up encouraging them, you know, and that's the way to love your brothers and brethren, you know, because when the Lord returns, you know, we want everyone to make it, you know, and no one to be left behind, just like uh, the, the ten virgins there, so five, five boys and the, and the five foolish, you know, and uh, the five foolish, they just be, be left behind. In Ephesians chapter 5, uh, there's one scripture here, Ephesians 5 in verse, uh, in verse 6, again it says about uh, uh, man, you know, mankind, and uh, and it says in verse 6, that, that no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things comes the wrath of God upon children of disobedience, you know. And uh, mostly it's about the words, you know, and, uh, and it's very powerful, you know, uh, the words, you know, what we speak. But if we speak the word of God, you know, if we stay, stick to the word of God, you know, that is really, really encouraging, encouraging them, you know. And everything else, you know, it's, it's just the holy things there. And, uh, you know, encouraging brothers and sisters by just getting the Bible out there and just showing them this is, you know, what the Lord wants us, you know. And uh, if, if we are awake in the Lord and we're trying to encourage someone, our brothers and sisters, you know, it's, it's really hard to encourage them if we are awake in the Lord, you know. And the only way if you see someone struggling and you are awake in the Lord, you know, it's both of you, you know, come together and say, this is my weakness, that's your weakness, you know, let's go and see someone who is the right person, you know, to uh, for encouragement. You've got the, the elders, the pastors, you know, you've got sisters in the Lord who's been here for quite a lot, you know, uh, in the fellowship, you know, even new brothers and sisters in the Lord, you know, you can get encouragement from them too. And it's pretty great, you know, helping one another, uh, especially when, you know, when, when the Lord is returning. Uh, and in uh, in uh, Second uh, Timothy, in chapter 3, let's finish off here. Yep, the Lord is uh, returning, you can see signs, you know, and uh, I hardly watch the news uh, on the TV, but uh, I've got, you know, this phone here, when you, whenever you swap the phone, you can see the news there, and all I just hear really is just the headlines, you know, and I don't want to go really into the details of what's happening, because by reading the headlines, you know, straight away, oh, the Lord is, this is what the Bible has been saying, this is what the scripture has been saying, this is what the Lord has been saying, you know. And, uh, and we don't have to really uh, go into details there. But uh, at 2 Timothy chapter, chapter 3, we read from verse 
on and uh, and it is uh, this know also that in the last days uh, perilous uh, times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own self uh, covetous, uh, boasters, proud, uh, blasphemous, disobedient, the parents, unthankful and holy. You know, it's happening, you know, in these days now, and it will get from bad to worse, you know. And without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, uh, incontinent, uh, thieves, despisers for those that are good, traitors, petty and high-minded, lovers of pleasures uh, more than lovers of God, you know, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof of such turn away, you know, and this scripture is for us, you know. We don't want to go back backwards, you know. And that was once our life, you know. Some of us here were this way, you know, most of us were in this in this uh, category here. And uh, we don't want to go backwards, you know. All we have to do is the Lord, you know, is encouraging us, you know, turn <coughs> uh, the, uh, from such a way, you know, turn away from it, you know. And uh, in verse 6 here, it says here, for of this sort, uh, they which creep into houses and lead captive, shield women, lead laden with sins, lead away with devil's lust. You know, it's happening, that's the worldly way. And uh, uh, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, you know. And, uh, you know, we're all children of God, we've got the Holy Spirit. And uh, if we are not heading the right direction, if we keep failing and failing and failing, and be encouraged by our pastors or our elders or someone be encouraging us over and over again, and if we're falling into the same weakness, you know, and that's how it will be, you know, we, our heart will be turned, the fleshly heart that the Lord has given us will turn again into stone heart, you know. We'll always reject someone trying to encourage us. We'll always be against them, you know. You always, you can, you can say by words, yes, yes, brother, I can do this, I can do that, but your heart will be always be the same, you know. You'll go back into the same weakness over and over again, you know. And, uh, you know, and that's, you know, no one can solve it, you yourself and the Lord, you know. It's you, your salvation and the Lord, you know. And to have that fleshly heart that the Lord has given us, you know, mm -hmm. all we have to do is just to humble ourselves in the Lord and say, Lord, uh, this is the time for me to change, you know. This is the time that I need to overcome this, you know, overcome that, you know. And that's what the Lord wants us to do, you know. Humbling ourselves in the sight of the Lord and be a doer of His work, you know. Not just a hearer, hearing the word from the left ear, ears and taking it, coming out from the right. You know, we, when we hear the word of God, I said, Lord, this is for me, Lord. You know, I want to be like that, you know, what the scripture says. And uh, and it's really great, you know, you feel really good. If we, You know, you feel really good if you overcome your weakness, you know. Every step, you know, step by step. And you go to the next level, you go to the next level, you know. And you keep going to the next level, you feel really, really, you know, like you're just flying. In the Bible talks about the eagles, you know, uh, one, of the, one of my favorite uh, birds, you know. And, uh, you know, I've been watching lots of documentaries about eagles, you know, and when they fly in the sky, you know, it, they just like, I don't know, it, it, it's just a different, you know, atmosphere there. In, and they can see everything, you know, the prayers down there, they can see, you know, it's nice and beautiful. You know, one time there was a scientist put a, a little uh, camera on one of these, uh, uh, one of these uh, eagles, right on the top. <coughs> you can see the view, you know, they, they go above the clouds, you know, come back down, you know, and it's really, really good, you know. And the scripture talks about it, about uh, the eagles, you know, let's be like that, you know, find on the top, you know, and stick to that high ground, you know, never try and, you know, try and go a step down, you know, a single step down, and uh, we can go more high, you know, but never come down, yeah. Let's finish off, make this our last one, uh, scriptures, in, uh, in Mark chapter 13, verse 30. What's my time, uh, Pastor Anthony? In the book left? On scripture. Left. On scripture. Left. <laughs> <laughs> so Mark chapter 13, verse 30. And when someone, you know, encourages us, you know, let's be happy with it, you know. If someone, you know, I like, I like being, being, told, being told off, you know. If I'm not going to walk in the right direction, you know, I like being told off by someone straight in my face. Then, then, then I'm just leaving me to walk, you know. And uh, you know, what, how I take it, that's that's my own, you know. But if someone comes straight to my face and tell me that's wrong, then you shouldn't be doing that. You know, I like it straight away, you know. At least it goes, it goes with the scripture that the word of God, you know. 
and you know that's saving your brothers and sisters. You know, don't take it seriously, but take it as a learning lesson. You know, learning steps to them. In uh, Mark 13, 13, uh, Jesus said, <coughs> "I'm in the wrong." Was telling you, it says, yeah, and they cried out again. Oh, sorry, no, I'm in the wrong. <laughs> yeah, tell you, this is Jesus Christ here, yeah, and it says, yeah, and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but, uh, but he that shall endure unto the end uh, shall, uh, the same shall be saved, you know, and that's what it is, you know. Do not let yourself down, you know, there are people who will hate you with what you're doing, if you're walking in the right direction, you know, hate is a really strong word there, you know. The world already hates a lot there, you know, it would hate us, you know. And, uh, you know, if we endure to the end, you know, we will be saved when the world returns. And all people said? Amen. 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 Right, prayer line time now. It's very important for prayer line. as an example, verse 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, uh, you tired, you're tired of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weighty matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought you to have done and not to leave the other undone. You blind guides which strain on that and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Verse 28. Uh, even so you outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. <coughs> now that's the Pharisees there, that's religion, that you want to appear, um, appear righteous and spiritual on the outside, and having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, and you know, all that. Uh, but inside, they, they, they haven't got a half of the world. Uh, and we'll have a look as well in chapter 5. Matthew 5, 29. Yeah, that's 21. 